Go down um, to 19. It says, Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, there it is, persuading the multitudes, I believe that that was demonically inspired, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Um, wow. Okay, so let's keep going. Acts 16, 26. We're going to see the same thing. Acts 16, uh, Acts 16, 16 through 26. Let's look at that. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried, and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. Paul, Paul, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he, and he came out, he, the demon spirit, that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates, these men being Jews, exceedingly troubled our city, and they teach customs which are not long, law, lawful for us. Here we go, verse 22 being Romans to receive or reserve. Verse 22, then the multitude rose up. Amazing. Every time he's, he's doing something and doing miracles and the words going forth, the multitudes get stirred up. Then the multitude arose, rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Okay. All right. Um, wow. Wow. So we've seen a couple of examples where exactly where the word goes forth or Paul, you know, moves in the miraculous and people can see the power of God. And then this thing, all of a sudden, same thing. The crowd gets stirred up, beatings, whippings or whatever, imprisonment. Um, so what, what is, you know, God's answer to all of this? Where the enemy stirring up this, what is God's answer? If you go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, because in verse 7 he said, Thorn of flesh was given to me to buffet me. And then verse 8 and 9, he says, concerning this, this thing, see, he, he didn't say this sickness or this illness, but he said this thing, I believe it was this phenomenon that's happening to him. Everywhere I go, and I speak the word, I'm getting beat, stoned, shipwrecked. The enemy is coming at me full force. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in my weakness. You know, and if you go in and you look up the word weakness there in verse 9, uh, weakness is um, defined as frailty or inability. Um, and then Paul speaking said, Therefore I must most gladly will rather, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of God, Christ may rest upon me. You know, so there it is. You know, some people point to that and they say, well, there it is, the word, you know, infirmity. You know, but the words weakness and infirmity are the same Greek word in that particular passage, number 769. And it's most often translated sickness or malady. But it's not the only translation of that word, and it's not the meaning of either of those words here. How do we know? Let's go to two other uses of that same word, 769. Matthew 18, 16. Matthew 8, verse 16 through 17. I don't have to hurry to get this done. He cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, He too, he himself too, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Look also at Luke 5.15 to see the same thing. You know, God is not confused or schizophrenic. He does not take our infirmities and then and, and let, the, let his son bear them on the cross to give them back and then say, my grace is sufficient for you. That's not how he operates. Uh, the word weakness and infirmity can also mean human frailty or inability. We see that in Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26, a very familiar scripture, says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. The same Greek word, 769. Our infirmities or weaknesses. What infirmity or weakness are we talking about in verse 26? It says, here it goes. Well, we do not know what we should pray as we ought. We don't know how to pray. That's our infirmity. That's our inability as humans. We don't know what we should pray. We can't pray the perfect will of God without the intervention of the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows the, what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So we don't know how to pray the will of God. That's an, that's an inability on our part. And in the scripture, that word is translated infirmity. Okay. So the human frailty or inability here is man's inability not to know what he should pray or not to know the mind of the Spirit. Since man is unable here, God uses Holy Spirit, the helper, to help us supernaturally pray in tongues so that we can pray the perfect will of God. 
In the case of Paul, when the devil sent his own messenger to come against Paul with buffetings designed to stop, curtail the revelation, stop the word from going forth, God sent his grace. His grace was manifested in a supernatural strength that allowed him to survive multiple beatings with rods and whips, stoning, shipwreck. We know that the grace of God also manifested in a, an earthquake that broke open a prison and broke loose the chains. I mean, that's a bad earthquake, not only break the prison open, but it caused the chains to fall off. You know, similarly, he sent a, uh, an angel to bust Peter out of a jail and escape death. You know, let's go back to that stoning in Acts 12, the, um, in Acts 14. The Jews stoned Paul so badly that they thought he was dead and left him. In the next verse, you know, uh, in the next verse, we see the grace of God manifested so strongly in Paul that it says when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, back into the same city. Um, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Wow. You know, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And we can see it clearly. This dude was beaten so bad that the people that beat him drug him out and thought he was dead. Can you imagine looking at somebody, you know, that you stoned, you know, that, you know, you tried to kill? You know, he must have looked pretty bad for them to leave him for dead. It wasn't like the disciples drug him out of the city. They drug him out of the city and left him for dead. So he had to have multiple, I'm, I'm guessing, like head injuries or something that would convince them that he was dead, you know. Um, but the grace of God, the strength of God that was made perfect in weakness came on him and quickened his body like a, a quickening that we think associated with Samson or something like that. You know, he got up and went back into the city and then went to another city back on his mission the, the, the next day. You know, that, you know, the grace of God, you know, was so strong on him um, that he was able to jump up from a near death beating and, and go on the road the next day. You know, um, it's, it looks like we're going into a, a third part. So I'm going to take my time now. So I got 10 more minutes. Uh, Lord, I just pray, help me. I'm not trying to rush. I'm not trying to, uh, to, uh, it's your grace, Lord. I just, I, I pause here to just say, I, I rely on your grace to get this across. I know I've been talking fast, but Lord, it's not my talking. It's not my persuasion. It's the word of God. I pray the word of God, which is quick and powerful and, and, and sharper than any two-edged sword, will piercing joints and, you know, marrow, Lord, that the word of God would bring revelation in this area to all that hear it uh, as we go into this third part. Um, God promised to take away sickness in many scriptures. The only thing he has not promised to take away is Satan and his angels. Not until the end, the end times. Satan was in the garden. You know, he was in the garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. You know, he was in the garden of Eden with Adam. He was in the garden with Jesus of Gethsemane. He's here in the earth today. And God's answer for dealing with Satan is use your weapons. Use the weapons that Jesus did, the word of God, faith, being led by the spirit, the name of Jesus. He said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick. Nowhere in scripture do we see Paul from being hindered um, from preaching the word because of a physical infirmity. Everywhere in scripture we see the devil hindering Paul through the literal definition of, of buffeting, which is beatings, stonings, imprisonment, you know, to be, to, to be stopped, curtailed, punished by, by mobs, uh, who I believe were agitated, inspired by the messenger of Satan. Um, the same messenger that stirred up the crowd with Jesus, you know, the same crowd, that, you know, kind of thing that happened to Stephen when the word was going forth. You know, even in the Old Testament, the devil motivated an evil queen and king uh, 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 to, to go after Elijah. You know, uh, what's her name? Jezebel um, and, and Ahab, you know, to come after um, Elijah. And the power of God, you know, the grace of God was sufficient for Elijah that he blinded a whole army. You know, um, we know about the earthquake, you know, Paul, you know, the thing that's amazing to me is that, you know, just like the devil couldn't um, kill Jesus and tell his assignment, because Jesus said, I lay down my life. No man takes my life from me. Suddenly the grace of God was on Paul so strong, the devil couldn't kill him through shipwrecks, beatings, whippings, stonings, nakedness, until Paul was finished. When Paul said, I have run my race, I have finished my course. Um, by that time, most of the New Testament, uh, after the book of Acts, was already written. It was written by Paul. The grace of God was so strong on Paul, you know, that it, 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 it caused him to live through everything that the enemy threw at him until all the revelations found in the New Testament were written, you know, d despite the devil's best efforts to keep it from happening. God's grace was sufficient for Paul to complete his assignment, you know, and, and I'm excited, you know, so well, look at your, you know, look at, look at your life, you know, look at my life, look at the assignment of God on your life. What is the devil throwing at you? You have the grace to overcome every demonically inspired opposition. And I'm not talking about sickness. Jesus bore that on the cross, Matthew 8, 17. I'm talking about 
opposition, people in the way, roadblocks, backbiters, people trying to do you in, slander you, stop you from fulfilling the plan of God for your life. When I see what God did for Paul, I'm encouraged about what he can do for me. I don't have the abundance of revelations that Paul had, so I don't expect to see the devil throw the kitchen sink at me like he did for Paul. But I can see in the word that whatever he, he sends, God will send a grace, a strength uh, that will be sufficient for it. Even if he has to send an earthquake or angel, you know, to, to, to get me out of whatever jam he throws. So um, I just I, I'm praying, you know, again, in conclusion that, you know, this, this word will, 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 will sink in. You know, that you, you know, that this tradition that the enemy will try to beguile you or twist you into um, that, that, you know, somehow I have a thorn in the flesh and that's why I can't kick my, my, my sexual addiction or that's why I can't get rid of, you know, whatever disease, you know, that, that you know, by, by his stripes, you know, we're already healed of, you know, that you'll see that this, this thorn in the flesh, this messenger was the messenger of Satan, just like the scripture says, the messenger of Satan you know, was, you know, uh, a, a demon, you know, I believe. And then that demon stirred up people, just like in the other verses, it was the Spirit of God that stirred up his prophets, like John the Baptist and, and so on and so forth, his messengers to bring forth the good tidings. The messenger of Satan brought bad tidings. And it says what those tidings are, buffeting, you know, to rap with the fist, to punish, to inflict, to curtail. That's exactly what happened to Paul. And we've, we've dissected it, we've looked at it every way, which, you know, but... The traditions of man can be so strong because it's repeated and repeated and gets so ingrained in our psyche that it's hard to let it go. But I pray that you would let the word of God, you know, as the Bible says, um, uh, let the word of God be true in every man a liar. And that's not a mean thing. Some, you know, I don't believe people pass down traditions uh, uh, maliciously, but it doesn't mean that those traditions and that error can't hurt you, you know, because ignorance, uh, ignorance can cause you, you know, to, to suffer. And that's not what we want to happen. Amen.